You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. How are you guys? I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday or whatever day you're watching or listening. Um, I appreciate you for listening to the podcast and supporting it. It's a little podcast that keeps going thanks to you guys listening. And uh, patron, my patrons, if you go, if you don't know what a patron is, um, they're folks who support the podcast by giving back. And you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash inside of you. Become a patron. I'll send you a message. And uh, there's a lot of perks, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a big community now. A lot of people have become friends and family, and it really supports the podcast and keeps the sucker going. So if you like the what you're listening to, appreciate it if you did that. Um, also, you can go to my link tree on Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum on Instagram, and go to the link tree, and you can see Cameo, and I'm on Cameo, and the what conventions I'm doing, and anything else I'm doing. Music, my band Sunspin, you go to sunspin.com. There's merch there. You can get Zooms. You can go to TalkvillePodcast.com and get Zooms with me and Welling. You can go there and buy some cool merch. And the Inside You Online store has a bunch of cool stuff like uh, Lexmas scripts signed and ship keys and tumblers and a lot of pictures, autographed pictures, so you know they're coming from me. Cool stuff. Um, very exciting. And I also want to give a shout out to Spooky Empire in Orlando. I had an absolute blast. Peter, thank you for having me um it was just a great time being at a horror convention ryan with you know like robert england freddy krueger and heather lane camp and nightmare and elm other nightmare and elm street people and the lost boys my friend jason patrick Kiefer sutherland was there nick frost who we love he was there um it was a great time great time so thank you for that great weekend i'm gonna go there next year whether they invite me or not i'll just go and shop i, I bought so much stuff uh, it was so much fun. It's uh, They do it around Halloween every year, so you guys got to go to that. Um, what else? What else? The Animal Rescue Mission, if you want to donate. They're amazing. My friend Shira, animalrescuemission.org. Uh, homeless Situation, foodonfoot.org. Um, Ronald McDonald House, helping families while their children are going through major surgeries or dealing with a lot. Um, these are places that I give back to and I appreciate. And uh, yeah, you know, it's funny as we have a big guest potentially coming on, it sounds like it and Ryan might not be here. I can't tell you the guests in case they cancel, but it's like the biggest guest we ever have. And Ryan is going to try and work it out. Well, yeah. Oh, you can't miss that one. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, great show for you today. I mean, it is a it's a good one. It's John Glover. I mean, he was my dad on Smallville. You can't beat that. It's so much fun talking to him. I'll tell you, it was serious. It was funny. It was, um, it just was, uh, I learned a lot, a lot more than I thought. John's been on before, but this one, you know, made me tear up a little and um, very honest and raw. Uh, I think he felt like it was therapy at times. And I hope you guys feel the same way. Um, what are our handles so people can follow us? Well, they're at Inside of You Pod on Twitter and at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And you can watch on YouTube if you want. But mm -hmm. subscribe, write a review on Apple. It really helps the show. And spread the word. Uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. Let's get inside of my father, <laughs> John Glover. <laughs> it's my point of view. Listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. All right, we're here with uh, Mr. Glover. Uh huh. Uh, you know what's what's kind of funny is I, I'm going to speak for Ryan, but Ryan here he doesn't have a microphone today because we didn't set it up. But uh, so don't talk to him and ask him questions. You could talk to him, but he just can't answer. But Ryan uh, has been watching Smallville for the first time on our Talkville podcast. So he's a little, uh, would you say you're a little excited? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's cool to he, see you in person. Yeah. Yeah. After what were three and a half, what, two and a half seasons in. Yep. Uh-huh. Two and a half? Yeah. Uh, three and a half. Two and a half because we're oh yeah yeah we're almost done with anyway we're watching you know we watch talk phil and, and most of these episodes i never saw i so didn't I, watch him you never saw them i didn't watch the show <laughs> you never you never once saw yourself on smallville 
I did in the beginning, and then I stopped watching. Why was that? Because uh, I didn't want to. Uh, I just felt I would be diff- I would be better if I if I wasn't aware of w- that. I didn't want to look that way or this way or whatever way. You were self conscious. You didn't yeah, want. I didn't want to be self conscious about it when I was working. That I, you know. Do you do that a lot? Have you done that with a lot of your work where? In the beginning, I used to look at me, myself all the time and love to. And then uh, and then as I get older, I, I stopped. Why is that? I don't know. Cause maybe because I'm older. <laughs> you don't, do you, I was going to talk to you about that because, look, you're not old. You're very youthful. You move around like you're still. How old do you feel, by the way? Because you're 79? Yeah. How, how old do you feel? 11. <laughs> you feel young. Adam looks at me and he says, "You're 11." <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I still feel like I was when I felt I was in my 20s. Really? Yeah. So you still have that? Do you wake up? Does it take you longer to wake up? Because for me, with my back, it takes me a while to wake up. I'm kind of like out of it. Do you wake up early, or you have a early. thirst for life? I, I yeah. You wait what time? Well, this morning I got up at five. Why? Well, I, well, because I thought it was six, but I was up. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do for all those extra hours? Well, I get the papers. Okay. Right? And the the woman across the street from us, uh, Bev, uh, she's you know, so I get her paper and go put it over up on her. Uh, right, she has a sort of a, a thing right up on her outside her front door right. and i just put it so she doesn't have to bend over is she older pick, yeah she, so i get i get her older first i i heard get her paper yeah i get her paper and put it up on her thing and then i came and, and come and get our new york times she gets the la times right we get the new york times and then and adam maybe gets up at seven or eight usually right and so so, so i have that time to read the paper and, and you do this every morning. You wake up, you get her Bev's paper, you get your paper, you have coffee, you get going. Right. Do you feel like, you know, I always feel like if I wait, the later I wake up, the less time I have to deal with myself. That I have not as much time to fill the day. So if I wake up at, I still wake up early. I wake up at eight. Uh-huh. But, you know, there's a lot of hours in the day to do things. So, you know, do you is, are things different now that you you feel like you're older? Like you don't feel like there's enough to do. You're not doing enough. That you feel bored, or you're always keeping yourself busy. Well, see, when I'm not, well, I don't know what the busy doing what. I mean, I knit scarves all the time. You do. You've all, always done that. Well, not always. Well, on, but, uh, yeah. On Smallville, but, you used to knit scarves and things. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it, so I'm making things. But but still, I mean, if I'm not working, I don't have a job. Uh, you know, I'm much more comfortable being the characters I play than I am being me. So it's because I, I, I I'm not that. I, I'm not me. It, it's I, so I, it's freer. I can do things that I wouldn't so, do for me. Right. So do you feel like you're? Uh, but I'm learning how to be comfortable with you more now. You, you're forced to be more comfortable with, especially with the strike now. Are you? Are, are, is that? I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I haven't worked in a while. No one has. Yeah, but I keep thinking that something that's wrong with me. <laughs> well, you, you, you can't work because there's no there's no work to be had. And I and I have a fear now because my mind isn't is uh, as sharp as sharp as it was because I I I don't even remember having to sit down and learn lines. I I mean I would read you know I could I could read a speech. And pretty much get it. So uh, I, I mean, it just they came in my head. That doesn't happen anymore. How? So, so you have to go over your lines a lot more. Well, but I'm. Well, but I have. I mean, do you have to go over them uh, significantly more than you? Well, well I, I don't remember because I don't. I mean, this is only recently. How that, recent? maybe a year or so that i've just but i but i haven't i don't remember i don't even remember what the last time i worked was well you did the walking dead fear the walking dead oh yeah 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 yeah. and you had a lot of lines in that oh yeah I and you managed a lot. to do it oh yeah i did that yeah 
So I guess that was the last one. And that wasn't that long ago. Was it? Well, then a what? year or two. Yeah, well, that a year is a long time. I mean, that's a lot, but it sounds to me like you have the same kind of thing uh, as I have. Is is it's not always comfortable being, you know, you're used to playing a character, doing things, and when you don't, you're you're brought to you're in a situation where okay, now I'm with myself for long periods of time. Yeah, and that kind of fucks with you. And the and the day is boring. It's like okay, how many scarves can I knit? Mm-hmm. So th- there's a point where I have to stop, and then what do I do every day? I mean, I do my hike in the morning. Adam and I go walk around the top of the mountain to start the day. And then I think, what the fuck am I going to do today? What I did yesterday. or Yeah, so it, it gets just, kind of mundane. Yeah, yeah. I think, but I think you're not alone. I think a lot of times you're probably in your head, you're thinking, what am I doing? What am I, what am I, you know, I'm not working. I can't, you know, but I think everybody feels that way. What do I do with myself? That's why, you know, people usually have kids. They have to tend to their kids. They have $10. You don't have children. You have your partner, Adam. Mm-hmm. You have a life. You can go out to dinner when you want. You can travel when you want. Mm. You can do all these things. But it sounds to me like your whole life, and it's obvious, you've been acting since how old? Um. <laughs> Teenager? Yeah. Yeah, it started in high school and then college. And then I moved to New York when I got out of college. And I started working almost right away. It was when all the regional theaters were starting around the country, you know. So I learned in front of audiences. Because I was too chicken to take a class. Because I I thought that that the other actors were probably going to be better than me. And (laughs) I wouldn't be. (laughs) Well, we all go through that. Yeah, yeah. you know, you started doing all this theater. You started doing all these things. I think your whole life, my point is, your whole life you've been acting. And also, I have also realized that, you know, for a long period of time, even today, I need validation. I need, like, I'm on a set. Great job. You see it. People like you. People. And when you're not doing something, when you can't get that away from work, where do you get the validation? Mm-hmm. And do you think that's part of it? Do you think you miss that validation? Do you, I guess the camaraderie and all the other things that, you know, uh, take place on a set. But do, do you feel like you like to be validated? Yeah, that's what I do. I act. I be other people. <laughs> you be other people. <laughs> I be other people. I create other people. And you do a yeah. great job of it, obviously. Thank you. <laughs> do you want to do this? Till the day you die? Do you yeah. want to act as long as possible? Yeah, I'd like to say, oh, I, jo- I saw John Glover on stage when he died. <laughs> <laughs> I'll die on stage. Really? Yeah. That's how- You want to work to the last minute? Yeah. Why? Why? Because that's what I do. That's what gets me off. Well, <laughs> there are other things. Yeah, but that's the best thing. When I'm doing somebody, I'm being somebody else. It's freeing. Really? That's that's how you your excitement is being someone else is is yeah. You how you thrive. Yeah. Pretending to be someone else. Yep. Is it is it do you, do you love yourself? I know that's a really weird question, but do, I mean do you like yourself? Can you look in the mirror and go, "You know, John, I think you're a good guy. I love you." Sometimes I like myself. So, sometimes I don't. What don't I, you like about yourself? Uh uh, less, I see. I grew up less than, because I was different than the other little boys. I, you know, my dad, sh- sh- uh, my dad was so athletic, and he taught me how to hit a ball and throw a ball and do a football and throw a football. <laughs> right. and, I, and he taught me well, but I wasn't interested in it. Mm-mm. So, so I, you know, what I, I was made fun of a lot when I was in school, because I, you know. Because yeah. you felt you were different, people thought you were different. Yeah, less than, and that and that gave me this feeling of being less than. So, but I found, I remember in high school, I, I we were doing the importance of being earnest. I think that was the play with June Allen Kitzmiller. Right. Yeah. June Allen Kitzmiller. June Allen Kitzmiller. She was a good, good actor too, but um, and she could sing. I sing off key, so I can't do musicals, <laughs> but I love musicals. I do too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it, uh, but you did that, but but I remember we had a, 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 uh, like a, in the cafeteria, there was a, uh, where, where we did the play, the whole school came 
You did a play in a cafeteria. Yeah, well, they, we didn't have a stage, so in the they cafeteria the room, out. they put yeah, they took the right. tables out and set a platform up, and they did it there. And there was a, a an assembly where we sort of did a preview of it. And so I was sort of you know with English accents and everything, and I was doing the thing, and people started laughing at me, and it felt I I I had control of 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 all these people that that I went to school with a lot of which di who didn't like me or anything but I could make them laugh Today's sponsor nutrisense.com uses a CGM right here under my arm which is a small device that provides real-time feedback on how your body responds to the foods that you're eating your exercise stress and even your sleep Now this is something that look guys if you see I'm wearing it I'm wearing my glucose monitor because I have found out I'm, I'm going to get into this. So just give me a second. Uh, NutriSense really monitors my glucose levels. So when I find myself crashing, tired, you can just take your phone because there's an app. I put it under my arm. The sensor retrieves all the information and it shows my glucose levels for the last X amount of hours. And I go, wow, I spiked here. Well, that's because you had three root beers, dude. Maybe you shouldn't be having so much root beer. Maybe you should keep your glucose levels at a even place. So you feel healthy, you feel better, you feel have more energy. Um, you know, it's not just for people who are, you know, I guess diabetic or whatever. It's for people who want to live a healthier life. And that's what's happened to me. I didn't know what this was. And NutriSense changed my mind on this whole uh, outlook on, on, on health. Um, NutriSense helps you analyze your glucose levels in real time in response to food, exercise, stress, and sleep. NutriSense includes one month of free board certified nutritionist guidance and support. Uh, it really is awesome, Ryan. If you want me to get you one, um, you could, your, your life, it's, it, it, it shows you what you're eating and 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 what you're doing you can monitor all that you take notes on this and it's just so easy to say okay i remember i crashed or i was really tired at two o'clock why well right here it says well you spiked and you crashed and this is why this happens and if you're if you like if you work and you, you're doing all these things you need more energy you monitor your glucose and it's just amazing my nutritionist helped me interpret the data and promptly answered all my questions. Patrick, thank you, Patrick, over at NutriSense. I said, well, what are these? See how it spikes here and spikes here? Well, well, what exactly are you eating and drinking, Michael? And they, you know, we managed it. And I said, well, what's, what are better things I could have in my diet that I can get some energy but won't crash? And so he sent me a list of things. So it really is wonderful. In, in just the short time that I've done this, I've noticed better sleep. I've noticed uh, sustained energy, less brain fog. It's because I'm not doing eating all those bad things. I'm not having all that sugar. And it's really helped me. And, you know, I'm 51. And I, no matter how old you are, you want to have sustained energy throughout the day. And right now, visit NutriSense.com slash inside to save $30 and get one month of free nutritionist support. That's NutriSense.com slash inside. Do you know, I had <clears throat> I talked about it, but I, I had the same thing. When I was a little boy, I was the smallest kid. I was not popular, all this stuff. You guys, listeners, have heard this. But I finally did a play. And it was the first time anybody paid any attention to me. We're the same. We're the same any people. Any attention. <laughs> yeah. A popular kid walked down and said, the hallway the next day and said, you were really funny in that play. <laughs> yep. And I, from that moment on, from a 16-year-old boy, 17-year-old boy, I said, not being me is what I'm going to be. We're the same. And I think that's why a lot of my depression, a lot of my anxiety throughout the years, and I'm, you know, uh, I, I think it's because all of a sudden you get to a certain age and you have to spend more time with yourself. And I spent most of my time on sets and making people laugh and entertaining and being the clown. And, but when the clown, yeah, yeah. And when the clown comes <laughs> home, you know what happens. So dealing with yourself and I had like a midlife crisis 
And I just, I didn't know what to do with myself. And, you know, all I could say is at least it's happening now. But, you know, do you think you know who you are at this point at 79 years old? Do you feel like I know who I am? I know who John Glover is. Or are you still kind of figuring who you are now that you're spending more time by yourself? Well, what I'm trying to figure out is how to make the the days not so boring. I used to work all the time. People would say that, oh, oh, you're always working, you're always working. And I was always working because I would take jobs. Sometimes I'd take jobs that they, my agents would say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But but I, yeah. I just wanted to, it, it was my play. So what can we get John to do to <laughs> fill these days? Get him, you know, get um, him an acting job. <laughs> there are movie theaters, there are... There's a lot of things to do in LA. There are parks, there are events, there are, why don't you put yourself out there? You say you're gonna do something three times a week, three three nights a week, and during the days, a few days, make a sort of a, write down a list of things. My therapist told me to do this, like fill your schedule with things. They don't, you don't have to pack it, but like have something, what's Monday? Oh, it's gonna be another boring day. Well, what, what can you do to change that? What can you do for Monday? What can you, where can you go? What can you experience? I mean, at 79, you've probably experienced quite a bit. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to get into Freddie Mercury again. <laughs> I can't believe you don't remember having sex with Freddie Mercury, although you know you did. I mean, if I had sex with Nicole Kidman, I would go, I remember sex with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we don't have to get into that. I know that recently I heard that you quit drinking wine. You're, you've, been, you've been hanging out with Paul Williams. Mm -hmm. and you've been doing these cons and batman stuff and the great paul williams um who wrote so many great songs you know he wrote uh the carpenters what, what? he wrote that song we've Mon only just begun no monday um what's that one monday 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 no i think that's mama's oh. in the palm <laughs> i thought so <laughs> uh, anyway but you you Supposedly, you, you you quit. Did you quit drinking, or you quit drinking wine? And why did you do that? Because I found if I drank one glass, uh, it, it threw me off in so, a bad way. Yeah, so I stopped, and I thought, okay. I thought first I could d just drink one, and then I just drank one, and it was it it, it, it tilted me. And you didn't like how you were acting? Did people ever say, hey, I don't like, you know, yep. how you act? They well, did. that's when I had too much. Because I used to, you know, go to dinner and have a, just keep, you know. A bottle of wine. A, a bottle of wine and then another bottle of wine. If, if there, if, and, yeah. yeah. But but the, it got so I could only, if I had one, it would, it would throw me off kilter. And I thought, well, can I, can I, really do that stop and i and i don't miss it now are you that's good that you don't miss it but i but i remember there was a some i remember there was somebody else a guy in baltimore that used to be very very funny he was older than me but 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 he started uh when he would drink it, it changed who he was and i and i thought that's uh, that's happening to me now yeah. And I, I didn't like it. Here's what people don't understand. You alone are enough. You're just enough. You're, you have such a great personality and there's so much fun to be around. You don't need it. Especially you say it alters you. It makes you someone else. That's sort of, I, I don't need a lot of people said, Oh, remember when we got shit faced at the, I go, I wasn't drunk. I'm just fun. And I probably look like I'm drunk. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. I've never really loved alcohol. But it's good that you're aware of it and that you're like, you know, why do I need this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know that we've talked about this in the past. I know that you're a, a big Alzheimer's advocate and you do the walks. You did it for your dad who passed away from Alzheimer's. My grandfather died of Alzheimer's. My grandmother died of Alzheimer's. Now being like 79 years old, are you sort of obsessed or thinking, oh, my God, what if I have Alzheimer's? Because every time I forget something, I'm like, oh. I, why don't I know this? Why don't I? Why, don't I, why can't I think about this? You just said this. Does it kind of like uh, weigh on you? Like I got to go to the doctor. I got to get a CAT scan or whatever the hell they do. I, I, yeah. It's I, 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 I wonder if if it is a, uh, yeah. 
I wonder about that. So, I, I mean, my memory's not as good as it used to be, like I say. So I don't know if it's going to get worse or, or, or if... if uh. And then, uh, you know, the, if I got a play, it, you know, you usually have at least four weeks of rehearsal. So maybe I could get that, you know, those four weeks in. See, you no, know, I want to play a. I want to play Prospero before I go. That's a demanding role. Yeah, big, big. I did a staged uh, reading of it once with some people, so we we read it, but we, we. But I didn't, so we didn't have to learn it, and I think could I learn it now? I mean, is is my mind that that okay? Do you would you? If somebody offered it to you, would you say yes, even out of fear? Yeah. You would do it even if you were like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. I, I, you would just take the chance? You know, if... if, if Is I, that scary to you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 uh, I, what, I'd, what I'd hope to do if I, if I you know, could find a place and, uh, to do it and a good director... Who would worked with you? Yeah, um, um, you know Jack O'Brien is who who I'd want, right? Because I've worked with him a lot and Shakespeare and stuff down in San Diego. Uh, and yeah, yeah. So, uh, but if if I had enough time to just you know, if I just read it, read it every day, every day, every day, every day. You think every you could day. do it? I think I could. I think you could too. And I think it yeah. probably gets in your head because I haven't acted in a while. I haven't done this. Yeah. This is how we all feel. When I don't act for a while, I'm like, I don't, I don't think I can learn these lines. I, it would take me forever. And you know what? It would. And then once it kind of, you got it in your memory, your, your mind, it's amazing how you train it. You train it by learning and learning and learning and memorizing. And when you don't, it slows down and goes back to like kind of the way it might have been or worse. Mm. But it's it's like anything else. It's a muscle. So I, you know, the fact that you have the bravery to be like, fuck yeah, I'd do it is amazing that you you take it because I would be chicken shit. I'd be like, no, <laughs> I'm gonna start out with just a couple scenes. And uh, if I like that and if I'm doing it, I'm managing, I'll work my way up, I'll build it. You're like going prospero. I'm like, Jesus Christ, John. But you've always had that that attitude since i've known you you've always been one to take risks to try things to be creative a good scene partner i mean i you know working with you i i think i improved substantially as an actor because i would learn my lines even more because i wanted to in a way impress you i wanted to i wanted you to almost like a father figure like i wanted you to be proud I wanted you to, I wanted to show John Tony award winner, all these things. I wanted to, I wanted you to like me and respect me. And, 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 uh, I, I always put a lot of weight on that sort of thing just because just to make me better. And it, and it did. Um, but I guess you don't lose that. You still have that, that in you, you know, I hope so. Well, you do, <laughs> you do. Do you want to just, do you, I think that maybe, you know, what would be good for you, maybe good for me. What if we just got into an acting class? Or what if we got into <laughs> something fucking just to sharpen our skills and start working on scenes? And... I did that when I was here because when I moved out to California and I started making money, then I would take jobs and make money. But I, but I wasn't enjoying uh, the work. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and there was a teacher that I know a lot of people worked with out here, a man named Milton Katselis. Um, and I thought I should go to him. And I, so I asked somebody at the gym one day that I knew that studied with him, can I go to a class and look at a class? And he asked Milton and Milton said, yeah, bring him, bring him, bring him. And so I studied with him. And, uh, and he said, Milton said to me one day, he said, you'd closed up shop. You'd stopped. It's like you, you weren't working anymore. So he got me back to, to enjoying the work again. So See, that's, so. What, that's interesting. Because I think it's the enjoyment I miss, but I don't look at it 
anything as enjoyment in terms of, you know, acting. Nothing really inspires me. So I wonder if I could bring back that element of like, do you, you remember in college or high school when you're just reading scenes with people mm -hmm. or you're just improvising mm -hmm. or you're playing games or tongue twisters and there was an element of fun. And my therapist told me, you have to do whatever you do. There has to be an element of fun in it or you're not going to enjoy it. So maybe that's also what I need. Maybe it's something getting a teacher like that goes, let, let me bring the fun back. He died. Oh, that's Milton not fun. died. Yeah. That's not fun. No. This show is sponsored by better help. Ryan, you ever feel like your brain is getting in the way of living your best life all the time? Yeah, I would say so. Like, you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you, you just can't seem to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back. So your brain can work for you instead of against you. And this is what happens with um, therapy. You're, you have all these things bottled up and you need to let them out and you need to talk to a professional. It really, really helps. Therapy is a great way to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it's way more convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It took me like a minute. It's so easy. Even I can do it. Then you get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Seriously, it's not uncommon. You meet someone, you're like, eh, I want to try someone else. It's easy. Just like that. BetterHelp is truly the best way to make your brain your friend. Give it a try. Visit betterhelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Inside of you is brought to you by Qualia Senolytic. I've been using this stuff for months on end now, and I can't imagine myself not taking this. If you want to feel better, if you want to have more focus, this stuff really works. Have you, have you heard about Senolytics, Ryan? I have. Yeah. It's a class of ingredients discovered less than 10 years ago, and they're being called one of the biggest discoveries of our time for helping to promote healthy aging and helping to enhance your physical prime. Your life goals in your career and beyond require productivity. But let's be honest, the aging process is not our friend when it comes to endless energy and productivity. And that's why I use Qualia Senolytic. If someone would have told me that there are science-backed ingredients that could help Help me feel 15 years younger in a matter of months. I, I wouldn't believe it. No one would believe it. But then I tried Qualia Senolytic. Uh, it is honestly changed me in so many ways. Talk about hyper focus now. Uh, what's great is I only take it two days a month. So you're not popping pills all the time. This is so easy. Two days a month. And you're going to notice a difference. And you're going to be like, whoa. Uh, it really made me feel that way. Uh, the formula is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in the combined effect of all ingredients together. 100-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. That's the kind of product I like um, when they give you a 100-day guarantee because they are obviously confident. Qualia Senolytic gives me higher energy levels. I feel 15 years younger, for crying out loud, uh, I'm more productive, no doubt about it. I'm more enthusiastic about uh, life. I have less aches and pains. Thank you, Qualia Senolytic. What makes the Qualia brand unique is it has fully transparent formulas that are created by top scientists, MDs, and NDs. Science-backed formulas backed with hundreds of research citations. Powerful results. Thousands of real life-changing reviews over six years and counting. Read the website. 100-day money-back guarantee, zero financial risk to try any Qualia formula. Help resist aging at the cellular level. Try Qualia Senolytic. Go to neurohacker.com slash inside for up to $100 off and use code inside at checkout for an additional 15% off. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products and statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. That's neurohacker.com slash inside for an extra 15% off your purchase. Thanks to Neurohacker for sponsoring today's video. Inside of You is brought to you by Discover. If you like using debit over credit, 
Don't you think it's time you also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. What um what fun things did he bring back to you? That- he just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I started, I did more scenes than anybody in the class. Because, I mean, I just, I, I started acting again. I started working again. And I, and I was loving the work. So, but, but... Yeah, this not working and and this you know or this strike that we're on. <laughs> Who knows? It puts I'm, you in a little bit of a lull. <clears throat> yeah, so I I don't know where to go, but you know, but it's but that uh, stage actors we, we're we're not we can work. That's true. Can't we? I mean, yeah, stage actors can work. Yeah, I that, believe right. Yeah. I mean, it's not part of the AMPTP, is it? I don't know. Uh, have you struck? <laughs> have <laughs> no. you striked? <laughs> no, no, no. You haven't. No, I don't. I want to work, but no, no. I mean, have you? Do you want to get out there and strike with your fellow SAG members, with other actors? Yeah, I understand it, but I haven't gone out. Would you? I yeah, I guess I should. Well, why don't we go one day? Okay, me and you, we'll just go strike for an okay. hour and then have lunch. All right. We could just strike and uh, support, support the cause. Okay. I think we should. All right. Do you, obviously, this is a stupid question, theater or film, if you had to choose? Theater. Why is that? Well, that's where I started. And and and, and, and when you're doing it, um, you, you kind of know if it's right, because you can feel the audience, whether they're listening, whether they're laughing or not laughing, or whether they're weeping or not weeping. But but that's that's sort of where I learned in front of an audience. And that's sort of also the instant gratification, the yeah. immediate validation. Right, yeah, exactly. Do you go to therapy? Uh, yeah. You do? Yeah. You have a therapist? Yes. And what do you talk to him about? I don't know. I, sometimes I don't feel like I don't know what else to say. Like the other day... Uh, we were talking. He said, you got 10 more minutes. I said, I don't know what to say. So he said, okay. And we stopped. So I think, well, may, I don't know. May, maybe I'm not being honest with myself. And there are things I need to talk about that we're not talking about. So I don't. But but now with us talking, I, we do Tuesdays. So, so maybe next Tuesday, I'll talk about some of this stuff. I think that's, I mean, right. that's, that's, it's, it's you being so honest and open. Like I said, I mean, before it, it people listening, they can, people can understand they could, it's just, it's real. It's real. And it's, you know, it happens to all of us and we all have our demons. And it's like, you know, for so long, I, I wanted everybody to like me, including my therapist. <laughs> I don't want you to think there's anything wrong with me. Then why are you going to therapy? <laughs> you know, but ultimately, you know, you have to, we have to dig deep. I just had therapy right before you came. And I started talking about disappointment and how much of a disappointment I think I've felt as a child that I was always disappointing everybody, my parents and people. And I just wasn't this, I wasn't that. And no matter how much you work on things, it carries, it stays with you. Even a part of it will always stay with you. That's what I call less than when I said less than. That's that's what I feel about myself a lot. But less than and exactly me too. But but you, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel less than because look at everything you've achieved. You have to, and that's hard. Sometimes you're like, I know, I know, I've had success, I've had, I made money, I've I've worked with great people, but I don't feel that. And that's what therapy is for: is to try and break through where you feel it, you understand it, you connect with it. And you don't let it rule your life, and you try to make changes that will um, fulfill that void. You know what I mean? So I think that you deserve it. I mean, as far, you know, you're you're a wonderful human being. 
there's not a more giving, lovable, talented guy out there. Um, and you deserve to be happy, even though, you know, you may not feel like, you know, you're trying to understand all these things. And look, I'm, I'm saying this because I feel the same thing. I, I, I struggle with it constantly. And, um, but it's worth it. It's worth it to just say, you know, do you tell him I feel less than mm. you do tell him that? Mm. And he says, why? I don't know what he says. <laughs> <laughs> well, get a new therapist. <laughs> I mean, that's what you need. Do you, uh, do you think about, do you, you know, I, I used to obsess about death. Do you obsess with it, with death? Do you think about, oh my God, how many years do I have left or how many, or does it not concern you? Yeah. I just wonder how it's going to happen. Well, yeah, I, ho I hope it goes quick. Well, of course. Yeah. I don't want to suffer. Well, here's but the I, thing. If you you know, I'm, 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 I mean, my next birthday, I'll be 80, which right. seems sort of, I've never been 80 before. That's, <laughs> been, that's big. Yeah, yeah. That's a big number. It's, yeah. you know, my grandfather lived till he was 95. He got Alzheimer's though at 90, but like his body and everything was like, if he didn't have Alzheimer's, he would have lived to a hundred and he had a good life. So I think what we do t too is I, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I'm 40. I can't believe I'm 40. I'm so old. Then I'm 50. And I'm like, why was I fucking thinking that when I was 40? <laughs> Stop thinking about how old you live and live now. Yeah. There's no reason you can't start doing things that make you happier. There's the strike's going to be over. You will work again. You'll be doing those things. But in the meantime, now's a chance to work on you. Now's a chance to find out what makes you tick, what makes you sad, what may, what what drives you, what holds you back. It's like work on all that. That should be your mission now. That's that's your work. Do that and try to fill your schedule with things to do. You know, go to New York more often. How often do you go to New York? I'm going next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever day. After, what are you going to do? You're going to go after, see some shows? After Salt Lake City, I'm going to New York. And you're going to go see some shows, I'm sure. Sure. And yeah. you love that. Yes. But when you're sitting there watching it, you're like, oh, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you, uh, do you feel like you're more critical as an actor watching other actors or are you, um, are you able to sit back and really just enjoy things? I remember there's this thing that when I was uh, doing a Lisbon Traviata, I was studying about uh, Kalas, and she said, uh, you can learn from anybody, good or bad, good and bad. So, you know, I've tried to look at that. And if there, you know, some actors that are doing something that's not honest or truthful or whatever, I I try to look at it and think, well, da 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 do 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 do. Right. Yeah, yeah. So right. Do, so what he's doing is, so you just learn from everyone. Yeah. But you still enjoy shows. You go to Don't. shows and you really enjoy them. Sure. Yeah. Is it like a whole night out? Do you and Adam have a nice dinner? You go see a show? Well, sometimes. Yeah. It depends. I mean, the, some stuff I, I see on my own. Um, very rarely usually we we look at those things together uh but uh, uh yeah what about what about shows here what about los angeles what about there's so many shows they're doing here at the pantages and things why do you go to more shows here you know i don't rightly know and i i should i'm glad i came here today so uh yeah we should go see some stuff here i would go see a show with you yeah i think that would be a blast yeah that does not sound like fun you're like oh, what am i gonna do this week well i'm gonna go see a show i'm gonna go have lunch with an old friend i'm gonna go to this park that i haven't been to there's so many places that i haven't even been to and i need to do these things too so um you know, you, I think sometimes we have to open up our eyes and just, and, and there's more to it than just what's in front of us. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times I'm in my house and I'm like, eh, okay, I just interviewed John. I guess I'll take a nap. <laughs> I like naps. Do you nap? <clears throat> sometimes. What time do you go to bed? Uh, r around 10 or so. And you Not wake up at six. Yeah. That's a long day. 
That's a long day. Yeah, it is. That's it's hard to fill your days no matter what. I mean, look at Ryan over here. Don't ask him a question because he can't talk. But like, you know, you know, he he probably has days where he's just bored off his ass. And he's a lot younger than we are. Bastard. Son of a bitch. Do you do you uh you're known a lot as, well in the film world, not so much in the theater world as being a, like playing great villains. Do you love playing villains? Was there a time in your life you're like, well, I, well, I, I don't want to play the villain anymore. I don't want to play that bad guy. I don't want to. I want to play, you know, this. Or did you? How, how did how did you work with that? I don't know. Uh, what I Kale? What's the critic's name from the New Yorker? Uh, All I remember is can be Kale. Kale. She <laughs> called me in the in the New Yorker. She called me the prime rotter of the eighties. The prime rotter, rotter. meaning okay. rotten characters. Yeah, yeah, villains. Yeah, prime rotter of the eighties. That's awesome. I know it was awesome. Well, how could you? Yeah, yeah, but but the villains move the play along. Yes, they yeah. do. They're, they're the they're, most they're interesting. The active, yeah, sure. They're the most interesting. Yeah, uh, especially when there's subtext and there's uh, development in the character oh, and reasons sure. why the character is bad. All that stuff. You know, you used to play Lionel Luther, and you always told me, and it just resonated throughout the the run of the show for me was that <clears throat> you have good intentions. You, I'm not. You're like I, I'm not evil. I I love my son. Yeah, because people, you know, the villains, they don't. I mean, nobody. They, yeah, they don't think they're old, but see, but but they started writing. They they were going to make me a a, a villain when I, this when, you know though. when we started, yeah. and I thought well, no no no, and this was when I was studying with uh, with Milton when the, right. when when all that happened, and he and he would used to say, you're not going to get this all together. Just start sneaking this stuff in. So so that's what I started doing. Yeah, because I realized. No, this man is a father, and he's trying to make his son a better, stronger man, and uh, uh, and so and slowly the writers started picking up on that. Yes, and and going with it. So I felt I felt I had a lot of power with them. I don't know if there's a character that we talk about more than you on the show, or how much your performance. Like we talk about Annette's performance a lot, but. You, we always talk about on our other podcast how much you bring. There's a there's a, there's an episode. Well, we'll bring that up later. But there's there's just these moments where somehow you feel for Lionel, even though you hate him. <laughs> he does these things to you or to people, to other characters, and then you're, you're, you're oh, but but the way you play it, it's so ambiguous it's so uh subtextual or whatever it's so uh just it's it's layered it's not just bad bad yeah. bad because it's easy to play that and how many roles do you see where a lot of times you're like oh that guy's just bad i saw this movie they remade fright night 2 i know i'm a big horror movie nut nut uh i have the poster tom holland signed it but they made <laughs> fright night 2 and I liked the movie, but the thing I thought didn't work was the lead character that was originally played by Chris Sarandon, who we both love. Uh, Chris Sarandon played the next door neighbor, who was the villain, with such charm. <laughs> and you liked him. And but he was so bad. He was <laughs> he was the bad vampire. And in this one, they just he was just bad. And it just wasn't it didn't have near the impact mm. and so that shows you that a lot of times it's in the writing if they would have written a scene or something showing that he wasn't he was layered and you charismatic something right and a lot of writers failed to do that and the fact that they said they started catering towards that um that sort of gift that you brought the show um you know i've never done a character i've set seven years because they they killed me in in um, I killed you. Dude. Yeah, I know, and that was I killed you. And I and I talked to the writers. I said, "Listen, when you do write me off, let Lex kill me." Because I figured that that would really 
be who you became. That was the thing that pushed me over the, no pun intended, yeah. pushed yeah. you out a window. Yeah, yeah. You, I did. you told them that. I asked them, I said, listen, when you kill me, l let Lex do it. And then that, and they bought it. That was one, to, one of the most pinnacle moments of the show to me, for my character anyway. For us. Yeah, both for of us. us. Yeah. And the look you gave me, it was almost like, I remember doing the scene with you. I remember, and I don't remember a lot, but we're standing there, I'm about to push you. And you just looked at me like letting go. <laughs> And when you're falling out the window, sorry for spoiler alerts for, for Ryan. <laughs> Did you know that happens? So. Yeah. Anyway, he, uh, you fall and just the look in your eye, it's almost like you're at peace with it. Like it's time. It was time. And this is the way I want it to go. It was just, I don't know, it was enigmatic and, and, and heavy. And, but you always brought that. And it always, like, because I would get bored. I would do scenes with certain people or, you know, and it was like, oh, I'm going to the bar. I'm getting another drink. I'm, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm getting knocked out. I'm going, you know, this, that, the love triangle. But when I saw that I had a scene with you, I knew it was going to be 10 times better than it was on the page because we were going to bring it. We were good together. We were good together. We were really good together. Yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. um, there was, yeah, there was an excitement. Did you enjoy, if you look back, do you think you really loved working on Smallville? Was it something that you go, you know, this was a, 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 a many years of my life that I, I spent on this show and playing this character. It's probably one of the most well-known characters you played, right? Yeah. I loved it. I loved you it. You loved it. And then, you know, then, then seven, I was gone. And then nine and 10. Yeah. They made him a, just a villain. The, the writers were, they didn't. I was so, I was so excited that when they said an alternate universe, that they were going to come up with some great stuff, but they just played out and out stereotypical villain. So you didn't like that? No. Did you was, tell them? <laughs> what are you going to no say? Yeah, they. It was beyond them. They had yeah. There was no imagination in that. Uh, yeah. Alternate universe. Yeah, well, at least you had seven good years. <laughs> yeah, Remember, I, you were on I had even... seven great years. I really were. I had a ball. It's the longest I've ever played one part. What was the second? Brimstone? Oh, they pulled the plug so fast on that show. Really? Yeah. Well, what was the second long? What other shows were you on for no, a long? No, this was the longest, because mostly you were filming in theater. I was what? Mostly you did film in theater. So you didn't do a lot of, like tv uh series where you were yeah. regular yeah, yeah, yeah you played parts like you were in law and order right, yeah, right? yeah, yeah different parts. done different. many many parts but i've never spent seven years with the same character same character so it was one and it was wonderful because they were writing good stuff until yeah. nine and ten came <laughs> yeah that's why i left in seven when alan miles left and you know Kristen was leaving uh, John Schneider was already dead. I'd already killed you. I'm like, there's nothing left for me. <laughs> there's nothing left for Lex to do here. You know, he doesn't have this antagonist anymore. He doesn't have the antagonist of John Schneider's character who always had a thing for Lex. It was just sort of, I need to move on. <laughs> I need to move on. And you moved. And it was funny because I remember they... Um, the president of the studio took me to dinner and said, what will make you stay for another three years? I said, nothing. And he was so insulted. He goes, look at Julianne Margulies. I go, what, what about her? Well, what has she done since ER or whatever it was? And I go, uh, and now fast forward, she did the good wife and got awards and is making so much money. But he was just, you know, doing using whatever tactic he, he could to get me to stay. And then I said, well, you know, just make me an offer. And they offered me the same money. <laughs> Not a dime more. Is that how you get somebody to come back for <laughs> yeah. three years? You just say, hey, you're mowing my lawn, right? I know you want to mow someone else's lawn, but, you know, if you mow my lawn for three more years, I'm going to give you the same money. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best analogy, but you get what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, I said no. I said no on that. Um, 
This is awesome. I feel like this is just having a conversation, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I really didn't think of what I was going to talk to you about. I just felt like I'm just going to talk to John when he's here. Uh -huh. We've gotten to therapy. We've gotten into your days. We've gotten into your, you know, getting older. Um, does does Adam, do you guys, you've been together so long since what, 80? 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. Do you call each other out on whatever? You don't even hesitate. You're like, John, you're being an asshole. John, this, Adam, you're being a dick. Do you, do you guys say that? Uh-huh. And you talk it out. Yep. We're How? learning them sometimes, but we're, we're, yeah. Well, we get, we're better. I mean, it's taken a while to, to really iron them out. But what, we, we yeah. get through them. What's the key to a, a good relationship or one that lasts 30 years? What do you think? Honesty, I guess. Do you think you weren't always honest in the beginning and throughout? You just, it sort of developed? Yeah. 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 Who is the best actor you ever worked with? Oh. The one that just sticks in your mind. You're like, this, this, is, this is the best actor I've ever worked with. Besides me. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted... Uh, uh, it's almost that I did... And I chickened out, too. Geraldine Page had a company. She worked for a little company. Right. She made no money. But she did all these plays that she wanted to do, and they were they were with some replacements because I I worked with her in White Nights, yeah, um, and um, so I guess I could, it would be Geraldine Page because last night we watched uh, Sweet Bird of Youth. Have you ever seen her no. do that? Okay, you got to watch her do Sweet Bird of Youth sometime. She does the film of it, um, and she's just genius, but. Um, but uh, she offered me, uh, they, they, she wanted me to, when this one guy was leaving, to replace him. And I thought, I, I don't know if I could do it without a rehearsal period. So I made up a lie that I, I had another job and couldn't do it. When was this? It was, uh, it was years ago. Years ago. Yeah. You regret that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I could have worked with her, you know, in a, you know, I mean, but the when we did the movie, it was, I mean, I did, I, I played, we were in the same scenes together, but it wouldn't have been like really playing with her, right? So, so I regret that I was chicken, that I didn't know, but, but I, it was because I, I didn't know if I could pick it up at, out of midair, and without a rehearsal period, um, yeah. Fear, fear got in the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, fear gets in the way. Sometimes I think fear is okay. Sometimes fear is telling yourself. Usually it's because, you know, you, you don't think you could do it and you should try to overcome that fear. But sometimes fear kind of tells you this is going to be a lot of work, a lot of stress. It's going to fucking kill you. It's going to be like exhausting mentally and physically. Do you want to do that? Do you want to feel like that? But no, I don't. So I'm not going to do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but I like to work so much that I probably would have done it. Right. But right, it right. was the it was just the fact of 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 going in, being thrown into it without a a real rehearsal period. Right. But uh, who's the best the best actor you've worked with? You think Geraldine Page is the best actor, based on the movie you did with her, or is there someone else? Whether you did a play when you won your Tonys, uh, someone you were like, this was one of the best actors I've ever worked with. I've, boy, I, I, I've worked with so many good actors, I, but I don't know, nothing rings as, as the, the most special one. Right. So I. Just a lot of good actors. Yeah. Have you worked with any actors that it was miserable to work with them? Yes. Where it just was not fun? Yes. Was Bill Murray one of them? No. Oh, okay. I just wanted he was I, Scroo He was in Scrooge, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh no, he was great to work with. He was. Oh yeah. He. I mean, there was one one line that that after we was walking anyway, I, I couldn't figure the the line in the they wrote didn't make much sense or anything, 
But right after lunch, he just said, I got it. This is it. Say this. Right. So right, right when he was, I was walking him to the elevator and, uh, and I knew what the line was and everything. And just, just, just as the elevator door was uh, closing, <laughs> I threw the line at him and you could see him go like that. So he was terrific. I loved working with Bill Murray. Really? Oh yeah. Why does he have a reputation? No. I, well, I, I, you hear some stuff, but he's one one of the legendary, you know, actors. But like, you know, some things came I, out, and some so some people have told me he's not the most pleasant person to work with. Oh, I found he was great. Yeah, great. I like that. Who was an actor that? I mean, you don't have to throw. Maybe, hopefully, they've died. <laughs> I'm not going to name anybody that I didn't like. <laughs> Is there someone who intimidated you? Uh, I uh, no, I can't think of anybody because I usually sort of know what I wanted to do. Yeah, w with it, you know. Yeah, and I'm uh, alive to. I, I saw Geraldine Page at, at, in one of these plays that at that little theater where she made no money just doing these things, and there was a moment she had. It was an Ibsen play. It was about the sun. I think there's somebody gets syphilis or somebody. And there was this moment that she did with her son where you thought, I mean, she was trying to love him, but she sort of went like like something. I, I, I can't describe what it was, but yeah. it, was something, it was something that was just so Jarring. whatever. And when uh, we were flying back from, uh, when we were doing White Nights, we were flying back on the airplane together and she was talking about, you know, Rip, her husband, and da da da, and this play and that play. And I said, There was this moment with your son in the play. And she said, Oh, that boy, he used to drive me crazy. I hated acting with him. And what I saw was, <laughs> was, was herself being, but, but it worked in the play. Being upset with him. Yeah. But but but, but it worked. Yeah, she used I, it. Yeah, yeah, she she. I mean, she hated working with him, and probably he said something that was like blah blah blah, blah was the, something. And so and she was like, oh, yeah. She just took it took it away. She was in the moment. I mean, did you when you were younger, when you started doing plays, did you want to be famous? I it was not fame. I wanted to be act an actor. But you didn't care if you're famous. You just wanted to be an actor. Well, the famous part would be nice, but I mean, I mean, I yeah, uh, but, yeah. But that was not my the the. It wasn't your goal. My my goal was to play play parts, to be in plays, and. But I think I think that's partly true. I think that we, you know, like we talked about earlier, the validation you get. And like that feeling you get when people immediately respond to you and like you and validate you and the audience. I think that it comes with that. It's almost like I, I love this and I want to be great. And with that, I want to be famous and do all these big parts and people to know me. Did you want people to recognize you and know you and, <laughs> and, and give you adoration? That, that's not bad. No, that's pretty good. <laughs> But it was it have to do with something where where uh, you know you get this adoration you get this and and with that because you become you get the fame you get the fame and you get you get both if you're a good actor if you're good enough you'll be famous and was there a point where you thought I should be more famous I'm like you were had such an ego did you ever have such an ego where you're like I'm so good I'm a Tony Award winner twice I should be getting these bigger roles why am i not being considered for these blockbuster movies i only won one tony oh i was nominated for two. Oh yeah i only won one. Oh okay so <laughs> but but were you, but did you did you ever get thinking cocky where well, i think we've all thought I, that at, at once at one time i i thought i should get a press agent to you know to sort of yeah so i guess i did promote you and give yeah. you more than you yeah. more uh right but but i thought if it if I did, I could get maybe better jobs. Right. So, so I don't know what it was. Did you? But yeah. uh, but I do. Uh, I mean, I've written. Uh, oh, here's what it was. There, there's there's this uh, show that was uh, Once Upon a One More Time. It was all the Once Upon a Time. 
No, Once Upon a One More Time. Oh. It was a musical with all of Brittany, uh, what was Spears? it? Spears? Spears' is whoops did she do whoops i did it again okay so but it had nothing to do with that it was a it, but that was a song in it but a, the male song sang it i had to get out of it because i uh i adam was sick and i and he said i need you to take care of me and it was going to open in washington dc so i got out of the uh, i had to quit the show oh. i decided to it was a very decision but it but it was my partner my life partner mm -hmm. and he wanted didn't want to be separated because he needed me to take care of him yeah and uh uh and and i remember i i've uh, i i wrote a couple of uh uh like letters or, or whatever or somehow or found their emails and 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 uh complimented their performances and and I heard back from them. Oh my God, coming from you, I think you're a wonderful actor. I mean, that's that to me makes me very happy. If other actors, it goes back to yeah. when I wouldn't take an acting class because I thought the other actors would would laugh at me or or not laugh at me if I was being <laughs> yeah. or would judge me. So right. so to hear it from a fellow actor, go, I, I'm so, <laughs> this coming from you it makes me so happy. Yeah, I mean, it just. That, that your colleagues, your yeah. your peers, yeah. Right? When they, yeah, I I feel the same way. All right, this is called shit talking with John Glover. It's rapid fire. These are from the top tier patrons. I love you. Go to patreon.com slash inside you. But right. I have to think fast. Rapid fire. You just have to answer fast. Oh, but dear. no, no, no. You don't have to be. You can answer it as slow as you want. Okay. All right. Nathan, <laughs> do you wish your Walking Dead character had become the Negan? Is that the character Negan? Of the spinoff, do you hope to one day have a role like Negan and be a visceral bad guy? You Negan, wish... that was that the character I played. Negan, no, he was uh, 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 no, it was Bobby. No, anyway. Oh no, no, I know what he's saying. He's saying like the Negan of the spinoff. Like Negan was a big role, and so do you want to be like the Negan of the spinoff? Did you oh, want see? Your... I didn't watch the show, yeah, so I didn't know yeah. what that but is. But do you wish the Walking Dead character had become uh, a lot bigger? Well, yeah, I, I think they. I I was sad that they killed me off so soon. I I thought there was a, a lot going that I that they could have. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to stay on the show longer. David P. John, you're an amazing man. I have no questions, but just want to thank you for your amazing talent and sharing it with us. Well, who said that? Dave P. Who's Dave P. He's my patron. Tell Dave you love him and thank you. Dave, I love you and thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Jen T, your partner is an incredible artist. Oh, Are I there any artistic hobbies outside of acting that you like to partake in during your free time? Well, scarf making. Scarf making. Yes. Leanne, if you could go back and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be and why? Well, if Geraldine Page wanted you to play with her, I would play for, with her now. <laughs> oh, she fun? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Michelle K., out of all the amazing roles you've had the opportunity to play, what one has stuck with you the most and why? And this could be your own thoughts of like, which, which role that you're like, this was the role for me. This is the role that I loved, loved playing. This is the one that sticks with me. You know, I did this movie several marches ago. I, or t it was in March, I remember. It's called The Home. It was uh, uh, James, De Mar Mar James DeMonico. Right. He, did you watch those Purge movies? Do you, are you aware no. of these Purge movies? I know them. Well, they scare the crap out of me. But he wrote this movie called The Home. And it takes... Uh, about an old age home. And I was a resident of the home, but I also taught an act, and I was an off-Broadway actor, and I taught uh, a class, an acting class to the other residents in the home. And, um, and I, thought, I thought this part was, I, I, when I read the script, he offered it to me, and I read the script and I thought, how does he know me so well? I, I mean, this guy. Wow. Is the, yeah, it's not. It's not been. They don't. They're looking for a distributor of it. It's called the Home. You've seen it? No, I've not seen it yet. But oh. I, I, 
I, I want to see it now. Well, I want to see it now too. They said they'd get when I got to New York, they'd screen it for me so I could see it. Oh, good. Yeah, you got to let me know how that goes. I will. I will. You seem excited about it. I was. I was so excited about it. I even did a, a, a one scene where um, where I was naked, but butt naked. Really? Yeah. They don't show anything. I remember them saying. Um, because they, they were talking about the way the scene was set up and the w- way the camera moved. And I heard the one woman was, the, two women com- cameramen, the, the camera operators, and said, well, we okay, no, the chair is hiding his penis, so we don't see his penis <laughs> there. <laughs> Are you happy with your penis? Uh, well, it could be a little larger. Okay. All right. Raj, tell me about a recent time you felt worry-free. When I was doing this part, I just t- told really? you about. Yeah, that's when you just kind of. Well, because I felt it was me. I, yeah. I, I, th- I thought, how does he know me so well? I, yeah, it was, and I had a great time work, waking, making, making that. Rachel movie. D. Okay, John, I was fortunate to see you on Broadway in Nikolai and the others. Do you have any plans for future stage work? Is there a dream role you'd love to play on stage? Well, you said that already. Prospero. Sort of like Prospero. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, Anybody out there want to make a, do a Tempest? <laughs> man, that's a tough play. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful though. So look, you have a lot to talk about with your therapist. Now. <laughs> Thanks to you. Well, right. I have a lot to talk about with mine. It's it's just part of the, you know, it's at least there's not so much a stigma, not as much of a stigma attached to therapy and, you know, being less than or feeling less than. It's like for so many years, it's just like, you know, I felt like uh, I don't, I shouldn't, my dad doesn't go to therapy. He doesn't do this. He's <laughs> a, he must be a real man. And I'm like, no, dude, you want to become a better human being? Talk to someone. Get rid of your shit. You want to feel better uh, about yourself, and you deserve. You, we all deserve to, to, you know, to love each other and all that. But I, I love you. I do. Mutual. Seriously, I, I I love you, and I would be there for you in a second if you needed me. And I feel the same way about you. Well, You're my baby. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Dad. This is always a pleasure, and uh, thanks for getting so personal and deep and honest with me. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Michael. <laughs> Well, I love you, Johnny Glover. You're a tremendous, tremendous talent, tremendous man. And um, I really, really appreciate you. So thanks for coming on again and supporting your boy. I love you. Why don't we uh, get into the top tiers? Let us do it. Top (laughs) tiers. These are the top tiers. They get their names shouted out in every episode. They support the podcast by going to patreon.com slash talkville or patreon.com slash inside of you uh become a member today become a patron today and uh, we love you without you guys i couldn't do this and a big shout out to my producer bryce who i love and and jason and ryan who's here couldn't do the show without you guys love you ryan are you good i'm good yeah i got up early this morning and i'm and, tired and, as and we, and we we're recording this in the late afternoon and we generally don't yeah and that's why we're tired yeah yeah it's hard to get through it but yeah. uh it's uh it's fun when we know like, we like, have a, like a, a good guest. 11 a.m 10 a.m start yeah. Oh, I'm so tired. But today, yeah. And also, it's November. We're recording this on November 1st. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it, look, it's November has just started, and it feels like the end of the year already, and I'm sad, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm kind of happy that for the next two months, I don't have a ton of stuff to do. Yeah. Um, not for the most part. I hope everybody's healthy and happy. And uh, I also want to give one of my best friends, who I love and adore and is a big supporter of this podcast... Alex Fadovich, I want to give her all my love and I want you to give all your prayers because her her papa passed away and um, she loved him dearly and he was an awesome, awesome man. I got to meet him a few times and he was, what an energy, a ball of energy. And Alex, I'm almost tearing up, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, I love you and I'm thinking about you and uh, we'll help you get through this. We will. There's a lot of love. Um, here are the top tier shout outs. Nancy D, Lee and Kristen, Little Lisa, Yukiko. Nancy D, it was good to see you uh, in Orlando. Damn good. Yukiko. Jill E, Brian H, I miss you, Brian. We got to go to a concert. Nico P, I miss you. Robert B, I miss you. I'm going to just say it to everybody. Robert B, Jason W, 
Sophie M, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Ashley Ryan, Mike E, L Dan Supremo. 99 more. Santiago M, I got the statue. Chad W, Leanne P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Dave H, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray Harada, Tabitha T, Tom N, Talia M, Betsy D, Rhiannon and C, Corey K, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D, Joey M, Eugene and Leah. So good seeing you in DC and all the rest of you. Corey, Angela F, Mel S, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Amanda R, Jen B, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jarrell, Jam and J, Leanne J, Luna R, Mike F, Stone H, Stay Wild, Moonchild, Brian L, Kendall L, Kara C, Jessica B, Kyle F, Marisol P, Kaylee J, Brian A, Ashley F, Mary Louise L, Romeo B, Frank B, Jen T, Nikki L. Did we say little Lisa? I don't see her name on here. April R, Randy S, Derek N, JDW, Oral P, Ginger Insomniac, Rachel D, Lorelai L, Melissa H, Nicholas W, Stephanie and Evan, Charlene A, Don G. Do we not say little Lisa? Little Lisa's in the three spot as per usual. Was she? Yeah. Did she's I say that? Not clean up today, but she's uh, batting third. Well, little, little Lisa. Little Lisa, thanks for the shirt too, little Lisa. Thank you, everybody who sends me things. Some people send me things and it's like a stop, stop sending me things. You're too nice and you don't need to. I have enough stuff. You're so nice. Gosh. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I love you. Um, from the Hollywood Hills in Hollywood, California, I am Michael Rosenbaum. I'm Ryan Tails. <laughs> Little wave to the camera. And, Bye. Uh, be good to yourself, please. Just do it. Love yourself. It's the holidays coming up. It's important. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.